right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Steve Gordon, who's the founder of the Unstoppable CEO and the Unstoppable Agency, and he's joining us from Florida today. How are you doing, Gordon? I'm doing great. Steve, my goodness. <laughs> it's okay. Good to see you, John. Yeah, good to see you too, Steve. And what we wanted to talk about today was four ways to overcome the biggest challenges in growing and attracting clients when you're a service-based business. Um, okay, Steve, so um, let's define what you mean by a service-based business, because I think sometimes people think they're a service-based business, but they're not. <laughs> and sometimes people who are a service-based business don't realize that that's the business they're in. Well, I, you know, for me, the, the classic definition is that you're getting paid for the knowledge between your ears rather than some product that you're delivering. Right. And, uh, and I, I like to keep my definitions very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's, a, I mean, that's a perfect definition, but I said it's, a, it's funny because sometimes like consultants won't think that they're in a service-based business because they'll, oh, yeah. no, that's yeah, exactly absolutely. what they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. So, what are some of the uh, what are some of the these four challenges uh, to be able to attract clients when you're in a service based business? Well, I, I think the the fundamental challenge comes down to uh, a, a lack of clarity and focus. And there, are, I think, four things that that you can do in these types of businesses to attack that and and to get past it. Um, and what we see when we're working with a business owner, when we can get them to think through these things and overcome them, all of a sudden their progress in, in sales and attracting clients starts to really increase. And so, um, so the first of those, those four things is, is to get clear on who their ideal client is. You would be surprised if I told you that probably 80% of the businesses that we work with when they come to us have, have no real definition of their ideal client. Yeah. I have, Actually, to be honest, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised because I think that's, <laughs> That's, I think everybody, I think a lot of people assume that they know who their idea client is, but when you really, you know, try to nail them down, it turns out that they don't. No, they don't. And part of that is, is fear because they're afraid that if I define my ideal client as this group of people, that is now by definition going to exclude other people. And what we tell them is, look, if somebody's coming at you waving money, yeah. ready to pay you, you can make a business decision at that point and decide to take the money and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But for marketing purposes, we need to be focused because marketing that's targeted at everyone is targeted at no one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think, that's a, I think that's a great point uh, and, and I really like, because that's the one I, I talk about a lot is that, that people really don't like making choices, right? As you say, when you define your target customer, you're by definition unchoosing a bunch of other ones, right? And that's always hard. And especially if you're, if you're growing your business, because it, it's, the temptation always is all revenue is good revenue, right? But eventually right. you have to focus. Well, you have to. I mean, you can't serve everyone. And, and to really create a profitable business, which is the point, mm -hmm. uh, you, you've got to narrow your focus enough that you can create repeatability in it. And in a service business, that is particularly difficult. It's not like yeah. we've got an assembly line and we're building iPhones or Chevrolets or something where everything's going to be the same. A lot of times in a service business, if you're not careful and you're working with all these different types of clients, now everything is totally unique and different and it's very hard to, to create profitability. Out. Yeah, because that's, that's a huge challenge if you think about it because... You, you know, inevitably, a lot of people in a service-based um, business, they want to stand out by being e extremely customer-focused. And that tends to translate into doing a lot of things that are very exclusive or customized to that, co to that customer. And as you say, that then, that's why a lot of them plateau, because that's not a scalable model. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's the first big, big thing you want to do is get clear on who that ideal client is. And then the, the second thing that you want to do is take that information and then simplify the way that you approach referrals and turn that into a system. And for the vast majority of service-based businesses, you're not looking for a thousand clients this year. Mm -hmm. You're looking for that, that high value group, you know, that's maybe a dozen clients or two dozen or three dozen, you know, and, and, to get those, the easiest, fastest, most effective way to do that is by referral. But 
about 80% of businesses when surveyed said they have no system or process in place to influence referrals in any way. And, uh, and so that's really one of the things that we, we spend a lot of time on is how do, you, how do you influence referrals and how do you simplify and take the risk out of it so that you can unlock a lot more referrals? Because what we found is that, you know, if you've got a group of clients now, they like you, they're happy with the service that you give them. They're probably not all gonna spontaneously refer. And if they do, it'll yep. be one, one at a time, two at a time here and there. Mm-hmm. But if you can take the risk out of it for them and give them an easy way to do that, and, and we can talk about how we, how we go about that specifically, but if you give them an easy way to do it, what we see is that you can quickly go to the, the point where every client is referring five, 10, 15, 20. I mean, just in our own firm, in the last month from two clients, we did 60 referrals. My goodness. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be fascinating to to hear um, the, the method you use because I do think today that it's still something that a lot of people struggle with because they think that everybody knows that referral business is great business, but very few people know how to systematize it or do it in, the, in a good way. Uh, in a repeatable way. And most people, the referral is just asking, you know, they just ask somebody a referral and the person goes, they're put on the spot and they go, yeah, well, I can't think of anybody offhand, but I'll let you know if I do. Right, exactly. And that's the problem with it. Um, and so I know we've only got about 15 minutes, so I'm going to make this yeah. really quick. I, I usually sure. do a, an all day workshop on it, but the, the basic idea is this, that uh, the reason you're not getting referrals is there's way too much risk in it. There's reputational risk for the client making the referral. So the way to remove that is to give them a proxy. And the, the, the risk comes from the fact that the, the fundamental result of that referral is a sales meeting. And so if we can put something between the act of making the referral, that introduction, and the sales meeting, that will move the prospect further along, then, then we, we make this easier. And the thing that we use to do that is an information piece. Uh, my favorite one, kind of the gold standard, is to use a book. So if you have a book that's created as kind of a lead generator, you can go to your clients and say, you know, John, I'm on a mission to transform the way small businesses do referrals. And I'm never going to reach everybody, but I'm really passionate about this. It's my life's work. I've written this book on the topic. And I would love to sit with you and brainstorm who you know that should get a copy of this book. And then I'd like to send it to them as a gift from you. Right. And clients go, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, let's do that. And they'll come back and ask, hey, do you have any more of those books I could send out? You know, when was the last time you pinned somebody down for a referral? And then they came back two weeks later and said, would you do that again? Yeah, no, that's phenomenal. No, I, I, I never. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so that's a, so what's, a, what's, another, what's another challenge that, uh, that uh, service businesses need to overcome? Uh, the, the third big one that, that we focus on is the offer. So what offer are you making? And this is particularly challenging in service businesses because a lot of times we're selling something that's intangible and invisible. You know, if I'm selling an iPhone, it's pretty easy to say, here's the offer. You can get this phone if you give me this money. But in a service business, you might be asking somebody for, you know, 10,000 or 100,000 or a million dollars in return for something that they can't touch and feel. And to the extent that you can improve your offer and bring clarity into it and align it with the way the prospect thinks about the problem that you're going to solve, uh, that can often go a long way to solving a sales problem. And so we, we, that's one of the things we always look at when we're working with a company. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and that's, um, and, and that's a real interesting one as well is um, so being, being able to, being able to do that and do that effectively though, again, you have to have some system in place, right? Well, you, you've got to you got to have a system to deliver it, obviously, in place. Yeah. But uh, some of it is just as simple as looking at the language. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what a lot of service businesses get caught in a trap of is they will say, "All right, well, I'm in the accounting business, so I'm selling accounting services." Well, mm-hmm. as a business owner, I've paid accountants for twenty plus years now. I've never once woken up in the morning and said, "I really want accounting services," <laughs> right? But there are some results of that that I do really value. And so the, the simple fact is that the language that they use around that uh, isn't aligned with what their potential clients are looking for. And so some of it is just a matter of changing some wording. Um, sometimes it's more fundamental than that. And, and uh, what they're selling really isn't what's wanted. And if they added a little thing here or add a little thing there, they actually get a lot closer to what's wanted. 
Yeah, because if you think about it, I mean, there are times when you do say when you have you do get a proposal from somebody or an offer from somebody. And when you read it, then you go, your question is, exactly what am I getting? Exactly what is the what is the, you know what are you providing and what is the outcome? And I think that that's where again because let's face it, a lot of people who sell in a service who sell knowledge and stuff, they're not very good at describing it. No, they're too close most of the time. Yeah, and and it's not a deficiency in in that person or that business owner. It's just that they're too close to the mm-hmm. the problem to really be able to see it. And that's often where having a third party, even if it's just a, a trusted colleague that you go to, to have them question how you're describing something, does it make sense to them? That can help tremendously. And so what's the, what's the fourth, uh, what's the fourth one? The fourth is a big one. Um, and the fourth is the one that most people really, really uh, struggle with. It's, it's fixing your follow-up. So um, I'm sure you've, see this all the time. People get so focused on lead generation yeah. and they're, they're investing to pull all these leads in. And if the lead doesn't do business right away, they're completely forgotten. And uh, I look at that as a waste. Uh, you know, not everyone is going to buy today. And just because they don't buy today doesn't mean they're not ever going to buy. You've, you've invested in starting a relationship. And that's really all you've done when you've generated a lead. And you're going to get lucky in some percentage of them, probably a small percentage of them, are going to be ready to buy right now. But I, I don't know. You, there are all kinds of statistics out there on that. You probably see this mm-hmm. as well. Probably what? 90, 95% of them aren't going to buy today. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. So you have to have a, you have to have a good follow-up system, as you say, and you have to have something again, you have to have something that's repeatable because especially if you're a small, if you're a small service business, or maybe you're the only part, maybe you're, you know, an independent uh, consultant or whatever, as you say, you're going to get, you, you have that double-edged sword, you win a piece of business and then you get consumed in the delivery part of it. So the prospecting starts to go out the window. So if you're not, con- if you don't have a good system in place for, for follow-up with existing leads and opportunities and keeping, uh, keeping people progressing through your pipeline, you're going to be feast or famine, right? Absolutely. And so, Obviously, th- those four things are, in all of that, there's nothing really new. Those are all problems that probably everybody watching this knows that they have, but they've lived with them for a long time. And uh, I'm a big believer that, you know, if you, if you come to the party and see a problem and, and prescribe a cure, but, you know, the, there's no action following that, then what's the point of the cure in the first place? Uh, with follow-up, it, I, I think that's one of the biggest challenges overall. You can make up for a lot of other deficiencies with good follow-up. And one of the ways that we've been successful at getting business owners to do that, particularly service business owners who go through what you just described, you know, they, they get busy, they're doing client fulfillment, they run out of time. The way that we found the easiest to overcome that is to use a podcast as the means to do follow-up. It's fantastic technology. And as the business owner, all they have to do is show up and talk. So they don't need to know how to write a great article. They don't need to know how to, you know, create a book or deliver a webinar or any of that. If they can have a conversation like we're having and they can invest a couple of hours a month in it, then they can have off the charts follow up that will likely beat all of their competitors. Yeah, and I think that that's a fantastic uh, piece of advice because, as you say, I mean, the technology is so easy today. The d- way of distributing it is so easy, so there's no there's no real excuse. Because uh, let's face it, if you can't talk, you're probably not uh, going to be very successful in a, in a knowledge transfer business anyway, are you? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, listen, Gordon, this has been great. But before we go, yeah, I'd like you to uh, tell people a little bit more about your business and um, your services and how people can find out more about you. Yeah, John, love to. Um, so we work with professional service firms um, and, uh, and we help them address all of these problems. And, uh, and so um, happy to, to talk with anybody that, that is looking for help or just wondering what their options are there. And, uh, and just for folks who are watching or listening on the podcast, uh, we've set up a special page for them. If they go to unstoppableceo.net slash sales pop, you actually get a free copy of my latest book. It's called The Exponential Network Strategy. It actually describes how we use a podcast, not only for strategic follow-up, but also to build relationships with potential clients and referral partners. That's fantastic. And we'll include the link as well for that uh, free book 
uh, when this uh, uh, will include the link in the, in the blurb so people can uh, get at it. But I would highly recommend uh, that people check out the book and, and check out uh, and check out your services because I do know that it is such a hard when you're in a service business and especially you're in like a professional services business, it is so hard to juggle everything. So having processes and having great advice that can help you is uh, could be the difference between you having a an okay business where you keep your head just above water as opposed to having a scalable business where you can uh, you can really grow absolutely absolutely all right my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeline crm see you all for another expert interview really soon thank you